This episode of the PC Perspective Podcast is brought to you by KiwiCo. Change the way your kid plays with KiwiCo. Visit kiwico.com slash pcper to get your first crate free. That's k-i-w-i-c-o dot com slash pcper. Hey everyone, welcome to the PC Perspective Podcast. This is episode 540, being recorded uh, a day late, Thursday, April 18th, 2019. I'm Jim Tannis. I'm Jeremy Hellstrom. And I'm Josh Walrath. And Sebastian's not with us this week. Unfortunately, he's feeling uh, ill. We we were uh, going to record yesterday, uh, but he was sick then too, and, and still not better. So uh, everyone, please send your uh, best wishes to Sebastian. I, I don't think it's too serious, but with a a toddler in the house, you know, easy to get sick these days. Uh, so I uh, hope that's exactly where it came from. I'm sure. I'm sure. Uh, so uh, hoping, uh, hope the best for him to, for a speedy recovery. And when we're back, uh, we missed last week. Uh, of course, uh, we had some travel. Uh, some of that travel is stuff we're going to talk about today. Uh, but uh, before we uh, jump in, uh, actually, the first topic we're going to talk about today is a review and. Uh, it's a review that's associated with a giveaway, and we hadn't had a chance to talk about this on the podcast yet because the giveaway launched uh, after the last show went up. So I uh, just wanted to uh, make everyone aware uh, real quick. If you go to our site, go to pcper.com and go to our review page, you'll find this review of the Be Quiet Straight Power 11 850 watt power supply uh, from Lee. We're going to talk about the review uh, in a bit. But uh, just quick, if you scroll down to the very bottom of that review, there's a Gleam widget there. Gleam is the service we use to host giveaways. Um, we've got three of these things, three 850-watt power supplies, free to enter. There's different ways to gain entry. Uh, you can just click this button to, to gain an entry, or you can visit us or be quiet uh, at various social sites to get your entries. We're going to have the drawing. It was originally going to be tomorrow night at midnight, uh, but because we had a delay and everything, that, that's not going to leave enough time for people who listen to this on demand. So we've postponed it until next Tuesday at midnight. I guess that is going to be Tuesday the 23rd, April 23rd, uh, at midnight, or I guess 11.59 p.m. Eastern Time. So if you are listening to this on demand, uh, hopefully you'll hear it before then. Head over to the site. That's the Be Quiet Power Supply and check that out. Um all right, but let's uh, let's talk about that since we're already talking about it. That's our first review this week, and uh, it is the Be Quiet Straight Power 11 850 watt. Uh, Lee took a uh, look at it for us. It's a fully modular power supply, gold rated. It's uh, about 160 to 170 dollars uh, street price on Newegg and Amazon, and uh, obviously uh, Lee has the full details. If you like to get into things like Ripple and efficiency and all that. He's got the full uh, set of, of details there, uh, but we'll touch on, on the basics here. Uh, like I said, fully modular. And I really like the way that Be Quiet does their uh, modular layout. Uh, if you can see the pictures here, they've they've kind of, it's very clean. They're a German company, so it's, it's really a, a nice looking clean layout, nicely labeled. The accessory uh, leads are, instead of uh, stacked together, they're, they're uh, all, in one line so it's, it's you can fit them nicely on the supply it's easy to find when you're reaching in the case trying to connect or disconnect something it's easy to distinguish uh which one you're 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 playing with back there so it's a nice looking uh layout fsp is the oem for this one although that's you know that's what lee found when he opened it up uh obviously uh, with companies like be quiet corsair and stuff they they change their oems based on whatever can market conditions and prices they've got so can't guarantee it's always going to be FSP, but at least for this unit, it's FSP. Uh, so that's a good quality uh, brand, a good quality OEM. And it's using the Be Quiet 135 millimeter fan. So Be Quiet's obviously known for cool and quiet components. And uh, this fan runs very quiet, Lee said. It's almost inaudible at low to mid percentage loads. So good, uh, good uh, quiet option there. And Overall, he uh, he looked at it and he said that everything looked good. It's 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 well within the gold specifications for uh, efficiency. All the numbers checked out. The only concerns he had was that it's a it's rated for fifty. I'm sorry, it's rated for forty degrees and five year warranty. And he says normally you get a ten year, you know, at least in this range, you'd get a ten year warranty and rated for fifty degrees Celsius. And that doesn't necessarily mean it's bad. It's just that those numbers generally kind of indicate the the confidence of a, of a of a power supply 
uh, maker or distributor. And so it, it indicates, even though all the numbers check out, it indicates that they have a little bit less confidence in this product. But again, nothing that we've seen in the testing to show why. So it's a little strange there. And then you look at the price between $160 and $170, and you're going to be able to find a lot of options at that gold rating from other companies that are a little bit less than that too. So we'll see as this, you know, as this product's on the market, you might find sales on it. It's a good option, uh, but it's it's just priced a little high and that warranty's uh, a little low. So it's a little, a little interesting there, but still good enough for a silver award from Lee. Uh, you've got options. This is the 850 watt model. We've got it in uh, 450, 550, 650, 750, and 1000. So a lot of options there for for your uh, wattage needs. And uh, like I said, even though the price is a little high that you know Lee thought, you can get one for free. We've got three of them that we're giving away for free. So don't forget about that. Head over, enter the contest, get a free power supply. They're full retail units. We're shipping them. Uh, be quiet, send them to us, and we'll be shipping them out to you. And as a result of that, uh, unfortunately, it's only limited to US shipping addresses because at $160, if we have to ship internationally and worry about tariffs and, and other fees, it becomes uh, it just becomes not worth the cost um, to to ship it based on the value of the item. Uh, so we will look at future reviews of doing sort of like a drop shipment instead of having us have to physically mail it. We'll we'll work with some with our future partners to to drop ship so that you can enter internationally. Uh, but uh, for this one, U.S. only, and that, again, is open until basically midnight uh, Eastern next Tuesday, the 23rd. All right. Um, have you, do you guys use Be Quiet Power Supplies? Yeah. Uh, yeah. They're, they're nice and solid uh, and it's slightly less expensive often, but not always, as we mm -hmm. can see. Yeah. But I'm curious if it's either that Lee got a new camera or if Sebastian's decided to make him up his game. Because the internal shots in this review are gorgeous. Let's see if I can uh, switch over here. Yeah, he's got some nice, some nice looks. Yeah, some better lighting. Yeah. Yep. Better contrast. Not as washed out. Ken's missing out. <laughs> All right. Yeah, good, good, uh, good circuitry imagery here for you. Wire-free design. Nice big caps. Looking good. All right. Uh, well, let's uh, let's jump into the next review then. Uh, and this is a review from Chris Koch. Uh, this is the uh, Razer Kraken 2019 wired gaming headset. Now, when you see this, if you're watching the uh, the video, it is Razer green, very bright in your face green, a bit too green. Uh, the good news is this particular headset is available in other color options. Uh, I believe if I can find the image here, here we go. Uh, it's available in that, that razor green, but also black, uh, a color they're calling quartz. That's uh, a pink, sort of a pink and white combination and a color they're calling console, which is sort of uh, black and blue. It's uh, or almost a purplish blue. So it's, it kind of reminds me of the PS4 color scheme. So uh, you do have some color options there. You don't have to go with that uh, very uh, intense green, uh, but this is a, uh, it's a cheaper headset. It's an entry level kind of headset. It's uh, I think it was $80 uh, MSRP. And uh, Chris took a look at it and said that it's, it's pretty good at that price. Uh, the, uh, the sound quality for gaming is, is very good. Uh, it's comfortable. Uh, one of the things I liked that he said was that uh, it doesn't, it, it kind of has a, a cutout or it kind of accommodates uh, when it hits your face uh, a space if you're wearing glasses. So it's not going to pinch the, the glasses against the side of your face. And I do wear glasses uh, uh, frequently uh, for distance. And so if I'm gaming from the couch or, or from a, a PC that's that's uh, got the monitor a little bit farther away, it's not gonna pinch your, your glasses. That's a nice nice little touch. Like I said, sound quality for gaming was was pretty good. Uh, the It's it's a an over the ear, but it doesn't seal that well uh, in terms of, of the design. However, even though it's not sealing your ear off like a a true noise canceling headphone. He mentioned that it does have good sound isolation and uh, is, is pretty effective at, at uh, you know, passive uh, noise cancellation, nothing active like you'd find on the, the Bose or Sony headsets, but uh, a good a good sound that doesn't, doesn't leak too much, keeps the, the background noise to a minimum. Uh, for music, he said it's okay. It's not great. Uh, it, it is bass heavy, like a lot of gaming headsets, but not overwhelmingly so. 
And uh, the one issue, though, he said, is that the mic is really bad. Uh, he's got a sample here. I like how Chris does this uh, for his gaming headset reviews. He records a, a voice sample and uploads it right into the review so you can listen to it. And uh, he says, with this headset, it's 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 crackly. It's There's a lot of noise in the signal, and it's very susceptible to plosives, those P's and and, and B's, you know, where you get that kind of uh, blowout sound. So uh, take a listen here if you're interested in, in hearing how that sounds. But if you're not, you know, it, it's acceptable for, for casual stuff. Uh, so if you're interested primarily in it as a, uh, a sound device, if you're not going to be speaking into the microphone, you just want that sort of surround effect or, or music, um, it's a nice option at, at $80. Although he, d he also mentions too, if you add $20 to your budget, you know, and $20 is $20. So, you know, but, but if you can add $20 to your budget, you get a huge range of other options that are better, uh, from all different manufacturers, including Razer. So, uh, some, you know, some, something to consider there as you're shopping for this. Uh, but this is the, again, the Razer Kraken 2019 edition gaming headset, 80 bucks. Um, not a bad option at that price, except for the microphone. So just, uh, keep that in mind. You know, some years back, um, I was given just, uh, I went to QuakeCon <clears throat> and Tom Tapp was throwing out stuff and I got an answer right. And, you know, he, he threw me the Orca, which is, you know, kind of the previous generation of this. Oh. And, you know, it was a, it was a solid set of headphones. I mean, uh, unfortunately I gave them to my, my kid when, you know, what, six, seven years ago. I mean, they trashed it because, you know, a 10 year old kids. Yeah. Yeah. They're, they're hard on things. Uh, but yeah, no, when, uh, actually I was kind of using and testing it out and seeing what it was. I mean, it was, it was, uh, a lot more comfortable than you would expect. Uh, it had kind of the microfiber, um, you know, instead of the, the pleather stuff to the, uh, the actual pads. But, uh, you know, it was, it was, uh, you know, it, it, it didn't weigh a whole lot. The sound for what it was, was really good. And especially because, you know, it was free for me, but you know, at the time it was 75 bucks to $95, depending on where you bought it. And so, you know, Razer makes some pretty good headphones. Um, one thing is, is, uh, sometimes the, the build quality is not as robust as other options. And so you just, uh, got to kind of keep that in mind when, when using it, you don't want to throw them around. You don't want to throw them in your bag and, you know, pile a whole bunch more stuff on it. But, uh, you know, they, they, my experience with them so far have been pretty positive. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, it, it's funny R razor, um, because I don't know if it's their marketing or their design or whatever. And obviously there were a few years ago, there were some issues with some, some quality issues. Um, they get a lot of, uh, uh, hate or, you know, they're, they're, they're controversial. Like it, a lot of folks, uh, whenever we cover razor products, we always get the comments, you know, Oh, they, how much do they pay you for this? And, um, obviously nothing, we don't, we don't do that, but, um, I've had a, my, my, my keyboard I use right now is a razor or not a chroma. It's, uh, it's a nice, and it's a nice keyboard. I like their keys, their, their, uh, their switches. Uh, I've had a razor mice, uh, some razor mice over the years. They've been good. Uh, obviously there's, you can always have an issue with certain products. And in this case, like something like the mic is not good, but yeah, they're not a bad option. Uh, I don't like the logo. I think it's a little too much. I don't like that crazy snake looking logo thing, but, um, and then yeah. that, that yellow green color is, is obnoxious. Yeah. It's like, yeah. But, uh, you know, you, you can find them in black. You can find them, them in, yeah. in chrome or not chrome. Uh, what do they call it? Uh, quartz, you know, nice, that, that, that sort of cool pink and white. If you, you know, that's your thing too. So some good stuff there. All right. Well, uh, let's jump into the news. Uh, there were a bunch of reviews uh, the last two weeks that we missed, but Sebastian was involved in many of them. So I, I elected to hold those off for now. You can always find them if you go to pcpro.com slash reviews. Um, and we may talk about them uh, in subsequent podcasts when he's back. Uh, but uh, that's why we were a little short on reviews this uh, these past two weeks in terms of what we're going to talk about here. So so keep that in mind. But let's so we get a week in. off and Sebastian has to do it alone? What we can we can do that. We can just stick him in front of a camera, twenty four hour live feed. But, there we go. Uh, yeah. All right. Uh, news first up this week. We've got because uh, there there was again a ton of uh, news the last two weeks. AMD has uh, launched their second gen 
Ryzen Pro mobile processors. And in addition to the second gen Ryzen Pro, they've introduced the Ryzen, I'm sorry, the Athlon Pro mobile SKU. Now, uh, Josh and Jeremy, did you, uh, did you have a chance to look at this? Yeah, I mean, I took a quick look at it uh, because, I mean, it's it's really exciting if AMD can get these out really, really freaking quickly and get them into the hands of MSI and ASUS and everyone that's going to be selling the, the coming generation of gaming laptops because these are pretty damn nice. I mean, they're, they're all sitting at 15 watts and you range from the, the 3700U which, and on, before I start, I, they're all multi-threaded, unlike a certain other competitors uh, would be. So, you know, eight threads at uh, four gigahertz tops with 10 Vega cores at 1400 megahertz. On paper, that looks brilliant. I mean, we've, we've got to sort of see it in the wild, but that just sounds utterly brilliant. And even going down to like the, the Athlon, which is, you know, still kicking around now that they've brought it back, you're still looking at 3.3 gigahertz across two cores, four threads, and three Vega cores all clocked at a gigahertz. It's going to be cheap as chips. And at the same time, you're going to get like a, a, your basic working laptop with significantly better graphics performance than you're seeing from a lot of the stuff right now. I... A lot of the stuff has been on the AMD press releases. So, I mean, when they're saying 12 hours of office and 10 hours of video playback, that, that sounds brilliant. I hope it's true. Uh, we've found that, you know, batteries are, it's an interesting science that is really hard to predict, especially because everyone uses their machines differently. But honestly, I mean, it would be fun. And a lot of these have built-in uh, security features. So you're going to see it attractive for businesses, one would hope, uh, from Dell and HP and the more traditional suppliers for the non-gaming laptops. It, it looks really, really brilliant, and I hope that it pans out as we see, start to see these products arrive. And, well, I mean, it's hard to get AMD-powered laptops. It has been for a very long time. And this is a compelling product, and Intel has, you know, production problems. So I'd love to see this come out and give us some competition. Yeah, and it's, Josh, uh, I'm sorry, oh, go ahead, Josh. Go ahead. No, you. Uh, you know, the, you kind of touched on it a little bit, uh, but you know, it's 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 not that the AMD hardware is bad because it's it's you know on paper it, it looks great. Uh, unfortunately, a lot of times the man the the laptop manufacturers will will cut a lot of corners because. They want to sell a little bit less expensive than, uh, you know, the Intel counterparts. The, the chips are a little bit cheaper. They can, in theory, get a little bit better margin overall with these AMD parts uh, and still be competitive with their higher end stuff. But, you know, sometimes they, they kind of cheap out on, on the cooling and, and uh, you know, they'll drop in some less than 65 watt hour battery that... Mm -hmm. Just doesn't give you the the kind of umph that uh, you know some of the uh, the larger ones would have or the more expensive bulkier batteries. But um, yeah, it's uh, you know with a well built laptop, it's it's going to perform really well. It's just that we got to get a well designed, well built laptop that is actually going to implement this. Yeah, and we saw some uh, at CES. Asus in particular was teasing some laptops in there. Now these, so these were gaming laptops. There was their Tough series, which they've rebranded this year to be more of an entry level price point, uh, while still maintaining that you know durable kind of uh, uh, design and and, and they get a lot of SKUs right now. They do. They have a lot of SKUs, and uh, uh, so you know these are not going to go there so the pro series uh, when it was launched last year was it last year or was it 2017 maybe early last year but the the pro the the Ryzen Pro and now Athlon Pro series they are not going to be targeted towards gaming laptops they're going to be targeted towards your productivity stuff your uh your you know your office kind of PCs but with the advantage of having Vega which right now beats Intel's integrated graphics option um and as Jeremy said having those higher core counts or higher thread counts at certain SKUs. Although I will point out, uh, as was mentioned in uh, Scott, uh, our, our very own Scott Michelle pointed out in our Discord, uh, as Jeremy said, they're, they're multi-threaded except for one. The, oh, the Ryzen, I missed that. Yeah, the Ryzen 3 Pro 3300U is four core, four threads. So at least at that but option. The thing, 
the thing that probably strikes me the most about this is it's a 15 watt TDB part up and down. Yeah. It's, uh, you know, it's not the, you know, previous AMD chips were 35 to 45, depending on, you know, the, the actual design and, and what they were trying to do. And so actually having a good performing, you know, go boosting up to four gigahertz uh, at the top end with a 15 watt TDP is, um, you know, that, that says quite a bit about their, you know, design work and, and the, uh, not foundation, but foundry work that uh, they've been working with uh, Global Foundries to uh, get that uh, TDP down there. Uh, and I think that they are, this this is the the enhanced 14 nanometer, or is it a 12 nanometer? I can't remember. This is 12, 12 nanometer. Yeah, it's 12. So, you know, they've done a lot of tweaking uh, with the designs to get it down to that kind of level where it can boost up and uh, run pretty quickly, especially that like graphics speed is is pretty impressive with uh with the overall wattage of course you know they mix and match speeds depending on the application but still that they're in that kind of envelope is um is a very positive thing yeah absolutely so uh we'll see uh we'll see how uh how these hit the market what kind of systems they'll be available in and uh hopefully get some to test so we can uh, we can put these uh put these in uh see how they compare to their their intel counterparts all right. Get them out now because I mean we've got uh, Navi coming up soon. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> um, Vega Vega isn't going to be the, the 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 headline for much longer. So, all right. So jumping into our next story, which may be the biggest story, uh, it's certainly the biggest of the last two weeks. Uh, pro- possibly candidate for story of the year. Apple and Qualcomm settled their lawsuit the morning it was set to begin. Uh, which, you know, I guess that's not surprising. You know, those last minute settlements come in and there's all kinds of layers here uh, because right after this was announced, Intel came out and now now well, we don't know the order of what happened in terms of, um, you know, the the, the, the timeline I, of, of what events happened behind the scenes. But in, in, in order of what came out I think out we publicly, can make an informed guess on that. We can, we can. We don't know for sure. But, but anyway, so... Qualcomm and Apple settled their disputes. This is over over modems, cellular modems in mobile devices. And Intel comes out and says, we're getting out of the 5G mo- uh, modem business, all within the span of 90 minutes the other day. So quite a story. Uh, what, what do you guys think about this? Well, Intel has been struggling with modems since they first announced their first 3G. I mean, these things were late to market. They were typically more power hungry, and uh, actual throughput was was worse than than uh, what their competitors had. And that you know, and their four G stuff was was delayed. Uh, they had paid, I think, Motorola a whole bunch to be put in their razor, if I'm remembering correctly. Um, yeah, that was that was terrible. I mean, it just uh, they they just were unable to get anything. And then their five G stuff. And well, okay, let's let's go back to to 4g uh with the apple iphone that they were in and they were split half and half qualcomm and intel if i again if if i'm saying things wrong here let me know but the qualcomm part could do one gigabit uh per second throughput but the intel could only do 600 megabit and so apple derated the the qualcomm modems (laughs) so that they matched and, uh, you know, there was differences in, in battery life between the two products because the Intel one was just sucking up too much juice. And, I mean, they, they bought hundreds of millions of dollars worth of expertise, other divisions from other companies, all to try to get this going and prop it up. And they've never been able to compete adequately. Um well, and just products. I mean, certainly they were selling these things for cheap and, in fact, maybe even paying guys to implement these modems in, in their phones. And it just was kind of a disaster. And it's it's interesting because the ultra mobile, you know, CPUs from uh, from Intel have suffered the same fate. I mean, what the Silverthorn and I can't remember all the stinking code words and then the uh, the Intel, you know, uh, smartphone that was just not very good and uh yeah it's it's you know they're 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 pulling the handles on this one and that's that's probably a good thing because there's no use chasing more money after bad money 
And uh, with with Apple making up with Qualcomm, that's that's Intel's single largest uh, um, buyer of of their parts. So the writing was kind of on the wall. They didn't have a competitive part. They weren't going to be making 5G stuff anytime soon. What they have was still less power efficient. And they just kind of threw in the towel. And uh, yeah, it the, that was just amazing that, that Qualcomm and Apple, who were at loggerheads for the longest time, just all of a sudden made up and, and signed some cross-licensing deals and everybody's happy and and the next generation of iPhones will all run on Qualcomm modems. So a win-win for Apple and Qualcomm and a big loss for Intel. Um, Well, yeah, I I guess we're huge, huge court cases. Like, like we're one of the smallest ones. The the smallest one was about $7 billion, billion, not million. Uh, One of the most recent ones, uh, as Josh mentioned, that was about to kick off was they were estimating about $30 billion. These are not small little fights. These, these were huge multi-billion dollar things that have been going on for more than two or three years now. And just to see it suddenly, like, and as you said, in the space of like 90 minutes, all right, Apple and Qualcomm have made peace and signed a six year deal. And Apple is shooting Qualcomm some money. They're not disclosing that. I don't know if eventually we're going to see that uh, as financial statements come out. But it, Tim Cook is is got to be you know a little bit upset at, at Intel right now because they've had to abandon all of these court cases. Some of which, like one of the recent ones, was uh, they have pretty good evidence that Qualcomm was tampering with the witnesses, and that would have gotten them a good way towards a settlement having to say oh uh you know when we were going to put and and they were already already facing the fact that there was not going to be a 5g apple phone this year they were hoping 2020 ish and until suddenly says yeah we're not going to be able to source that for you you're going to have to go back to your best friend qualcomm and so they've signed it i apple fans this may mean before the end of the year you might see a new Apple f- device. I don't know if it's possible, but it would be interesting to see if they can immediately turn it around. And, yeah. But it, this is just huge. I, I compared it not just to Microsoft versus half of the governments on the planet. Like this is Oracle giving up huge. Yeah, it, it is. It's a major, major change. I mean, and I think we, we're probably in a normal development cycle. We're probably too late for this year to get the, the Qualcomm 5G into the upcoming iPhones. So I, this is unusual, so who knows? But, and also Apple is one of the companies that has been known to have contingency plans upon contingency plans. So there might be something there, but uh, I wouldn't say it's a sure thing that we'll get 5G uh, this year in the iPhone, but certainly going forward. And it is, of course, the, the timing of the settlement. It's a six-year deal with a two-year option for, ex- for an extension. That's interesting too, because Obviously, Apple's working on their own modem. The rumors about that have been circulating for years. They've made several hires in that area. Um, so this, the length of the deal also indicates Apple may be further away from that than we thought. Uh, so we don't know all the but details you, of the you, settlement. You got to think that a company like Intel, which can spend many, many millions of dollars on any kind of project and hire as many people as they want, and they still have a, a depth of experience uh engineering across the entire company and they couldn't put out a good modem i mean nvidia bought icera and while the idea was was interesting and good that they had uh icera there was a reason why they sold themselves because the technology was just so hard to work on and to get running correctly that uh, what nvidia only had one Isera enabled uh, product their their entire time. Um, modems are hard. It's yeah, it, they are they are tricky, tricky units to to get right. And uh, so far, Qualcomm has been the top dog. Yeah, and there's hardly any other modem makers out there. Period. So it's interesting. Like buying mobile companies is a bad idea. <laughs> well, 
whatever the secret sauce is, Qualcomm has it figured out for now. And uh, from a consumer perspective, at least, uh, probably good news. I think, you know, we'll get better performance in the top selling smartphone in the U.S. at least. So uh, excited to see that. And uh, of course, if you were a Qualcomm stockholder, you had a very good week. I think the stock was up like 32% on this news, or maybe it was 23. I don't know. But uh, it went up big. Yeah, somewhere around there. Yeah, went up big. So did you get any stock while you were hanging out with them? No, no, I (laughs) unfortunately. And I and I was there for another reason, which we'll talk about next. Um, but no, and and just I know we joke too, but just to reiterate, uh, I do not own any tech stocks directly. Um that's just too not worth the risks. Um I thought you bought some Ashley Madison stock. Uh well, I view that as a lifestyle company. Oh, fair enough. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But uh and I lost my shirt. Figuratively. No, anyway. <laughs> anyway, uh, let's talk about Qualcomm news. Uh, we've got some more here. So uh, my one of my trips uh, last two weeks was to San Francisco for Qualcomm's AI day. And uh, like a, like every other company, because these are the, the AI is the, the big word. Qualcomm has been in AI. They've, they've uh, had an AI engine built into their SOCs for a couple of years now, and they've uh, continued to develop that. And they had some big announcements. Uh, first, though, Let's talk about what they announced on the uh, SOC, the smartphone SOC side, and that's a uh, a new range of, or a new uh, range of updates to their mid-range chips. Uh, it's funny they 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 have a the way they distinguish their series. They they look at the eight series, they call it the flagship. They look at the seven series, they call it high end. That's confusing to me. Like it's, uh, I would think to just call the eight high because this is really it's not truly high end. It's high middle range, you know. It reminds me of the Homer Simpson quote, uh, you know, the, the, these are dangerous streets for us upper, lower, middle class types. So it's it's a it's a range of of options there. So uh, they've they did some updates. the The core of these products, the the six fifty five, the seven thirty, and the seven thirty G, aren't too different. In most cases, they're running the same CPU, the same GPU, uh, but they've they've done a few things to improve uh, the experience. So looking at the 665, which would be more of your mid-range chip, um, they've updated the the AI engine, which we'll we'll talk about with the next story a little bit more. Uh, they've added more camera options. And again, because they're setting a platform here, how this will work in an end product is going to depend on the manufacturer, how they choose to implement this. But, but what Qualcomm is doing in this 6-series chip is giving you options for triple camera support, higher 48-megapixel uh, snapshots, 4K30 video capture, um, the AI improvements, things like HDR capture, stuff like that. So a lot of uh, user and user features that are optimized without really touching the CPU. The CPU is still the same as it was in the, I believe it was the six, uh, 660 uh, that came out last year. So looking more at use cases rather than just a pure hardware upgrade. Uh, where things are a little more interesting is the 670, I'm sorry, the 7730, which is an update to the 710 from uh, last generation. Uh, this does boost the processor and GPU. It does the four, It goes to the fourth gen AI engine. It has um, Wi-Fi 6 uh, or Wi-Fi uh, 802.11ax, however you want to refer to it, uh, capability or uh, it's, it's ready. So if again, if the handset manufacturer chooses to implement it, it'll support that. And so with the 730, you get this sort of performance boost. And the 730G, which is their gaming-focused part, is the base same base specs as the 730, with what Qualcomm says are optimizations for gaming. And they they weren't uh, too specific here, but what they said is they've gone in and and programmed into firmware optimizations for popular mobile games, uh, things like not just pop mobile games running natively on the on the handset, but uh, streaming things like you know streaming from your PC, streaming from consoles, future like uh, Google um, Stadia kind of streaming stuff. Uh, they've improved the display capabilities, so you get uh, a true HDR for your display. They're implementing things like network optimizations for mobile uh, multiplayer. There's anti cheat stuff going on, which you know that's helpful because there's a lot of cheating in these mobile online games. And jank so, reducing. And jank. Yeah, it's uh, there. There weren't a lot of specifics uh, in some of these, uh, <laughs> in some of these improvements. But they say it all comes together to offer fifteen to twenty-five percent uh, 
better performance in, in games and things like that, but not a huge raw update in terms of, of performance. So uh, it'll be interesting to see that the devices that have these will be coming out middle of this year, they say. Uh, so we'll take a look at that point. And uh, I know Sebastian does a lot of, uh, has done a lot of Qualcomm reviews for us. So we'll see if we can get him some to, to kind of see how this works in the, in the real world. But that's, that's sort of their, their handset update. And that tied into, because this, again, this was called AI day, uh, that tied into uh, their bigger announcement, which is they're getting into the dedicated data center or enterprise level AI acceleration game. They've announced a uh, physical card, the Qualcomm Cloud AI 100, uh, which is a dedicated AI inference uh, accelerator. And right now, the way they're looking at it, it's th th they... I don't believe they could officially state a performance level in terms of a raw number, but they compared it to their uh, 830, I think it was. Where was it? The might have been the 830. Well, they compared it to the 820. The 820, uh, it's 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 50 times better than the peak performance of the 820, which if you extrapolate that out, makes it one of the fastest, if not, I think it's the fastest on the market currently, or at least not on the market yet, but of the products on the market, this would be the fastest of this category. There are other products in the works, of course, so we'll see how long that holds, but it's, it's uh, a dedicated product for that cloud AI processing. And we've seen this um, in, from other companies, obviously, uh, Intel, uh, a NVIDIA. There's different ways you can do AI. You can do it on a CPU, and that's what kind of what Intel is looking at with adding AI processing or AI enhancements to their Xeon Scalable series. You can do it on a GPU. That's obviously NVIDIA's uh, key uh, area for them. And you can do it with FPGAs and um, and ASIC kind of stuff. And Intel's in the FPGA area. This is, you know, Qualcomm's going with ASICs. Um, so there's various levels of how you can approach this problem. And Qualcomm is looking at it from this ASIC style approach, but also, and they were very, very key on this, everyone's talking about AI and the network and the broad network ranging from your end user device to your uh, data center and everything in between. And one of the, the things that they pointed out was that we, everybody's focusing on the data center or, or even at the edge, which is that last level before you get to the end user device. That's, that's good, but you also have to do it on the device. And so their, their AI engine that they're implementing in those, those smartphone processors, uh, and a well, smartphone and mobile, both like the 855. Um, they, they say that you have to add support for this kind of processing locally too. You can't just ignore it and process everything in the cloud because even with 5G networking, there's still latency. There's data privacy considerations. There's, there's just other issues where you don't wanna be constantly sending stuff off for AI uh, acceleration. So keeping it on the device, merging it with strong Back end in the enterprise is important. And so that's sort of their play is we're going to offer you everything. We're going to have it in the data center. We're going to have it in your pocket. We're going to have it on your ARM powered laptop and, uh, and, and kind of attack that feature set from everywhere. But what do, what do you guys think? Uh, were you, uh, we've gone so from ubiquitous computing to ubiquitous AI. Yeah. Right. <laughs> and My so little of it is actually AI, AI in it. Yeah. <laughs> it's, AI is uh, overused. The words AI, I think, a lot of a lot of this processing Just isn't really a AI. Bit. But yeah, you know, ARM is uh, uh, they're they're Qualcomm's partner and and competitor. I mean, they've been uh, pushing, you know, the handheld AI, uh, well, ML, machine learning type stuff. Um, with I can't remember their name for it, Molly LML. I can't. I can't. Again, too many code names, and I'm getting too old. And my memory sucks, but you know they 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 have a design that they will willing to license to their partners. I don't know if anyone's actually picked it up yet, but the technology's there and the expertise is there, and they're just you know there's it, it's really funny to think about how computing has gone back and forth from you have a centralized computing with workstations where everything's done in the central. And the results are beam to you. And then, you know, we came with a PC where everything was done in front of you. And now and we went to, you know, kind of blade servers and cloud stuff. And then we're getting back into these, you know, we, we've got the hardware and the software that requires you to do 
plenty of other computing on on these things that uh, you know can't be done effectively in the cloud or in a data center because there's just so much latency and so much bandwidth that is required for some of these workloads. And so it's it's kind of fun and interesting to see that back and forth, the push and pull between the different philosophies on where you know your pixels should actually be pushed or where everything is actually computed and, and what devices need to be so smart and what can be dumb. And, uh, you know, we, we always get back to the point where the closer the compute is to you, the more efficient things tend to get. And, you know, who knows if that's going to be the point or, or going to be, you know, the truism forever or whatever. Um, but what do you guys think about that? Do you think that it's, it's, going to go back into more cloud stuff that you have these giant data centers that crunch numbers and have extreme cooling systems and you've just kind of got a dumb phone again well i think that's the goal for a lot of a lot of people with as long as the networking holds up well and not even just your phone but your computer we we're seeing the resurgence of gaming on demand and all of a sudden you know nvidia is going to provide you with a proper gpu over the cloud so that you can game remotely so you know i I could see it happening i was we were all here for the first wave of that and it didn't go well so we'll see if this one does i mean up to the point where i've seen i I, there's a poster uh here in vancouver uh because telus is thinking about rolling out 5g uh, which is probably just going to be 5G with the E on it, like AT&T. And it's like, I can't wait for my dad to have surgery at home. I don't think you want your doc to be remotely operating a scalpel over wireless 5G. It's, that's just not a good idea. But the, the, the dream is there, and you got to respect them for that, I guess. But I don't think 5G is going to be... I think 5G is going to be about the same way as cloud computing was. You know, yes, you you don't have to pay anymore. You just get someone else to host your data and everything is great. Like, all it is is someone else's server that you're paying for. Yep. So we'll see. Where where is the cloud, Jeremy? Uh, Here, let me just (laughs) eat some beans and... uh... Right. All right, well, something to keep an eye on. Oh, sorry. A lot of it's in Secaucus. Yes. <laughs> That's where CenturyLink's main <laughs> stuff is right now. <clears throat> yep. Oh, man. All right. Well, uh, before we continue on, uh, let's take a quick break to thank our sponsor this week. So uh, we'll be right back. Like many of you, I'm a parent. My son is six years old, and I often find myself envious of the technology he's had access to his entire life. He doesn't know a world where tablets, video games, on-demand videos, and the ability to find almost anything instantly via the internet don't exist. But as awesome as these advantages are, I also often worry about the downsides of technology. Using a tablet all day at school and at home doesn't require any real tactile experiences, and the ease of access to information and entertainment doesn't challenge him to think and explore. And that's why I jumped at the opportunity to try KiwiCo, which is a company that merges the benefits of new and old to provide kids of all ages with the ability to play and learn from a creative, hands-on experience. With KiwiCo, each month you and your child receive a project crate that's targeted to your child's age and interests, from arts and design to geography and culture to science and engineering. The crates come packed with everything you need for each project, allowing your child to work alone or with you to create something fun and educational. And that's really what's special about KiwiCo. Completing each project gives your child something real and tactile that they can be proud of. It gives them a sense of accomplishment. They figured out the instructions, overcame the challenges, and thought critically about a real-world, hands-on task. They built this. And once the project is complete, there's also a book or magazine in each crate filled with fun activities. Of course, there are lots of physical, hands-on activities out there for children, but KiwiCo gives you this experience conveniently. There's no need to shop for supplies or have supplies go to waste. You and your child can simply look forward each month to a fun educational experience that's delivered entirely right to your door. And there's no commitment. Simply choose the crate that matches your child's age and interest and have it delivered to your door in just a few days. You can pause or cancel your subscription at any time. 
My son loved his KiwiCo crate and immediately demanded to know when the next one would arrive. And I bet your child would have the same reaction. So we want you to try this out for yourself. Change the way your kid plays with KiwiCo. Visit KiwiCo.com slash PCPer and get your first crate free. That's K-I-W-I-C-O dot com slash PCPer for your first crate free. KiwiCo.com slash PCPer. We thank KiwiCo for their support of the PC Perspective podcast. All right, back to the show. Uh, moving on to the next story, uh, we've got some news uh, that was teased earlier this year. I believe it was uh, at CES uh, and is now getting some more details. And that is the Intel Optane Memory H10. Oh, my cats are fighting. I don't know if you can hear that. All right. <laughs> so um, not sure what's going on over there, but Intel. So Optane, uh, as, as you you know may recall, when it was first launched uh, to consumers, was meant as sort of a caching uh, drive. It was low capacity, 16 to 32 gigabyte modules that were very low latency, you know, not as fast in a straight line compared to, you know, competing like NVMe SSDs from Samsung, but very, uh, very low latency. So you get that, that kind of that, the, the snappiness that you expect from an SSD and you would pair it with a, a solid, a slower solid, solid state drive, or you'd pair it with uh, a hard drive even, and you'd get that sort of very fast caching. But the problem is with like laptops and small form factor devices, you don't always have room for multiple drives. And you look at like laptops in particular, they may have one MVME slot. And, you know, how do you, you can't really pair both. You'd have to pick one or the other. And so what uh, what H10 is, is Optane storage paired on a single module, a single M.2 module with an Intel 660p SSD. So you get the full sort of mix of both in a single tiny uh form factor. Now the issue, uh, well, a potential issue, of course, is that the 660p, which is a product you can buy from Intel right now, it's a QLC drive and QLC SSDs are, uh, the slower of the SSDs out there. Uh, they don't have the endurance. They don't have the, the, the right endurance. They don't have the, the snappiness, uh, but it's probably good enough for most and it's, and it's cost effective. It's, it's the cheapest for the capacity. So you're, you've got hundred terabytes of writes. Yeah. Okay. I think that's going to last me a bit. Well, sure. And, now, and again, the, when I say endurance, I didn't mean the longevity. I meant um, if you start writing a file, like a 50 gig file, you get to 20 gigabytes, ah, you exceed okay. the cache and it goes from six to 600 to 500 megabytes per second or whatever, whatever the speed was, it goes down to a hundred megabytes a second or something like that. It's, it's the, the, the drop off in performance on those long, massive, rights is significant but most people probably aren't going to be affected by that you know the typical user who wants faster game loads faster application launches probably isn't going to see that and so what you get here is you you, you get that qlc storage with your fast optane it's at, at launch it's going to be available in capacities of 16 gigabytes of optane paired with 256 gigabytes of qlc or 32 gigs of Optane, 512 gigabytes of QLC, and then again, 32 gigabytes of Optane and one terabyte. And we don't know pricing yet, but pricing should be pretty competitive at those capacities. And as long as you stay within that Optane cache, you're gonna get very, very good performance. Low Q depths at, at those shorter writes, very, very competitive with uh, competing drives that will probably be more expensive. So it is compelling. Why do those there. graphs look eerily familiar? I wonder why. I wonder why. Um, we we took the call for this from Intel, and uh, a certain gentleman, uh, an Intel employee named Alan Malventano, was on the line. So, so that's uh, that's how we learned about this. Um, and uh, and if you loved Alan's reviews with us, you're going to love Intel's marketing materials, uh, guaranteed. So, an interesting. Uh, product from Intel, probably, you know, it's not surprising when you think about it, and especially since they, they teased this uh, a few months ago. So not, not a surprising evolution of this, this technology, packaging it all into one, one drive. What, what matters is going to be price. We don't know what, uh, what the prices are. Should be competitive, but uh, we'll see. Got to leverage that Optane. Uh-huh. Yeah. 
Gotta well, I mean, now that the prices have come I mean, they down, they spent a lot of money for that. Attractive. Oh yeah. Yeah. But now that their prices are actually, you know, well, part of that, of course, is that DDR is so stupidly expensive right now. But you know, there's a little sweet spot here where the the pricing for Optane is not as ridiculous as it was when it first came out. Yep. And of course, we're we're seeing it with server memory, Optane persistent memory, which we talked about a few weeks yeah. ago. And, uh, and here, and then of course you can still go buy your individual Optane, ex, you know, uh, flash drives. You can, on the desktop, they have the 905 P, which is your, your PCIe adding card. That's all Optane at higher capacities. So there, there's options here. Um, you know, for, for a power user, for someone watching this show who does a lot of big transfers, either your, your development or, or moving lots of large data. I mean, you probably don't want this. You're probably going to go with like a 970 pro or a 970 evil plus because you're gonna get that that faster speeds at those larger sustained writes. But for everyone else, this is, again, if the price is right, this is an option because within that Optane cache, you're gonna be fine. Your applications are gonna load quick. Your game levels are gonna load quick. Um, so we'll see, something to keep an eye on. Uh, it won't be available as a standalone product at first. It's gonna be launching in select partners laptops uh, within the next couple of months, I believe. Uh, let's see. Uh, I don't know where I, I lost where they, they mentioned it, but it'll be out this year in laptops. Certain laptops is the only way you're going to get it initially. And then I imagine at some point they'll have the modules available for DIY upgraders to add to their own laptops or desktops. So that is Intel Optane H10 combined Optane with QLC 660p storage. All right. Uh, next Killer up. name. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Snappy. I, yeah, they've got to, uh, they could have come up with a, a little bit of a catchier, catchier yeah. name. But uh, next up, we've got some news. Uh, again, not a surprise here. This had been uh, announced that it was coming, but uh, but it's out there now. There is a driver for your Intel graphics cards to add ray tracing to GTX, uh, certain levels of Pascal and Turing based GTX graphics cards. Um, so, so you can get that original Intel crisis experience. Cards? Oh, <laughs> uh, what did I say? I, I think you said your Intel graphics cards. No, I'm sorry. I, I, well, I, I meant to say, or I think I was trying to say Pascal or Turing based uh -huh. graphics cards. Yeah. Yeah. Not into NVIDIA, NVIDIA. But so if you've got a GTX, uh, I believe the, uh, the limit here, the, the limitations are, uh, for Pascal, it's the 1060. Titan. Uh, 10, well, 1066 gig or up, up through the Titan uh, XP. Uh, and then on the Turing side, of course, you've got the, the 660, I'm sorry, 1660 and 1660 Ti. Uh, so, you know, graphics cards in the yeah, last so couple So if you missed years. the original launch of Crisis and didn't experience it at that pure three to four frames a second, now you can. Uh, yes, and and... The I, I like uh, Sebastian wrote this article for us, and he had a little note at the end, and I, I thought it was a good point. Back at the is well, actually, what I'll say first of all is obviously this isn't going to work well for most applications of ray tracing. They're not, they don't have they're, they're emulating the ray tracing. It's not they don't have the dedicated <laughs> RT cores, so it's, it's you're going to see something, but it's going to be a slideshow uh, in most cases. But uh, as Sebastian noted, you know. 15 to, you know, years ago or so, the late 90s into the early 2000s, when the graphics architecture of the companies then were, you know, with AM, ATI and, and NVIDIA. Hmm? Okay, sure, sure. Uh, but when, when things were changing rapidly from generation to generation, graphics demos were a kind of a huge deal. Those those special demos you could launch, you know, with the Nvidia always had the, the werewolf and yeah, the werewolf the and the ocean pools, uh, Tinkerbell and, and yeah, yeah, the, and that that's kind of we've Gone. kind of gotten away from that. Uh, there there've been some demos recently, um, but it, it's not the same. Like I remember buying my my Voodoo cards and then my my uh, Nvidia and ATI cards, and you go and you get the demos and you try to run them and see how awesome it was with the texturing and all the lighting. Um, that we've gotten away from that, but this is sort of like that again, where someone with one of these older cards can download the the demo, get the new driver, enable ray tracing, and see it. And it, they can see it and say, "Well, that looks nice." I can actually, I'm not watching a YouTube video or something, so I'm actually seeing it live on my screen. It's running like a slideshow, 
but I can see how ray tracing looks better. And then I can decide if I want to go buy an RTX card. And I think that's their play here because NVIDIA obviously uh, had, it was a disappointing launch, I think, it, to a certain extent. Prices were high, um, the mining fell off, so that took a huge chunk out of the uh, sales overall for that industry. Um, there was a, a complete lack of games uh, when RTX cards launched that you could really use them in. And even now there's not that many. Um, so having something like this, which exposes ray tracing locally to uh, a much wider audience might be something that can, can kickstart this or, or not. You know, people may look and say, I don't care that that's, I don't give a you know crap about this particular effect. And it's not worth the five hundred to twelve hundred dollar upgrade fee to go to an RTX card, so we'll we'll see. But it's 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 good to see that that it's out there. Also, obviously, AMD is is prepping their own ray tracing stuff, so we're we're gonna have ray tracing become accessible in some form. Not ideal, but it'll be there and accessible to a much broader base soon. So, any, anybody gonna rush out and uh, and and. Uh, grab their new RTX cards? I mean, what, what are you guys running? I've on got those drivers available and I still haven't loaded them. And I downloaded two of the three tech demos. <sighs> still haven't messed with them. It's been a bad couple of weeks. It, Let's uh, just yeah. call it a bad decade. Yeah. The, the uh, well, I, w I wouldn't go that far, but I'm sorry to hear that, Josh. Oh, some of it's us right. would. Yeah. For, for me, it's just been this, this, this year pretty much uh, every day seems like a, uh, it ends too soon. I need a few extra hours each a day. A new adventure in pain? Yes. Uh, I would, I mean, in every waking moment. Not necessarily pain, but discomfort, we'll say. Ah. There's levels, levels of, of yeah. irritability. But um, all right, so check that out. Go grab it. It's, it's the, uh, the Game Ready Driver 425.31 that you can uh, enable that on your GTX card. All right. And... Uh, uh, next up, we've got some news. Acer had an event in New York. Uh, this was one I was not able to make, uh, both fortunately and, for and unfortunately. I would have liked to have been there because they they launched some good stuff. But uh, I also, I don't think, I was on so many planes in the last two weeks, I don't think I could uh, take another one. But Acer had their event. They launched a, a huge range of updates, uh, displays, laptops, desktops. Uh, some of the, the key ones here that uh, Jeremy uh, wrote for us uh, include... Uh, the, the new Predator 43-inch monitor, variable refresh rate, uh, up to 144 hertz. Uh, some, some interesting professional stuff. Uh, some pretty sexy-looking desktops as well. Uh, what, 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 did you, what did you take away from this, Jeremy? Is that sandalwood? Oh, fancy-looking. <laughs> oh, yeah. You know it. It's, it's a woody. <laughs> it's a nice sandalwood woody, and you just you smell it as the, the system heats up. Which it will, because the bloody thing's got a pair of Intel Xeon Gold 6148s in it. <laughs> so yeah, that that is not your daddy's workstation. That is some serious power sitting there. In that little box, uh, along with the, the dual Xeons, you can have up to 192 gigabytes of RAM. And uh, the Quadro RTX 4000 or 6000, depending on what you want. So, I mean, it's it's kind of nice. And you notice that some of the monitors, their stands have matching wood on them because, of course, they do. And honestly, the, the weird one is just a little bit up there, Jim. So this is their gaming laptop that they showed off, which is, you know, going to be more interesting to most of our viewers, uh, which is the Predator Helios 700. So an upgrade from the 500 that they released. The entire keyboard and touchpad assembly slides forwards and backwards. So it sits like a normal laptop until you slide it forwards, which exposes two big fans a little bit further down, a little bit further. And all of a sudden, the uh, RTX 2080 or 2070 that's in there and Straight out from the PR, these are not the Max Q versions. I, I don't know how they fit them in this thing, but they're saying it's not the Max Q. So a full on 2080 suddenly gets to vent out its heat and the, the touchpad and wrist rest that's normally sitting flush on the key on the laptop becomes a wrist rest. 
And so you can simply, and it'll disable, you can disable the touchpad. So you can just simply rest your uh, palms on there and go nuts on the keyboard, which is interesting. I don't know how well it's going to work and it's not really portable. It's about 10 pounds. So you're not, you can carry it around, but it'll be a good workout. So it'd be interesting to see just how well this works out. And then the other one was a nice little uh, Predator Orion 5000 desktop, which looks huge, but isn't. It, it's 30 liters, so it's about the same size as that uh, smaller case Sebastian just uh, reviewed uh, two weeks ago. So, again, you get uh, the 2080 in there, and what, as the first time I've run into it, the, the, the there's a new Realtek Dragon uh, Gigabit NIC in there, which could be rather interesting so yeah it's gonna be a couple of things from acer they're all gonna be amazingly expensive because they're very very much high end but you know it's some interesting ideas and honestly i hope that the the workstations do well because that is a rather pretty workstation and dual zeon golds and that little tiny enclosure that's that's kind of impressive to me yeah, I like the look of it. I mean that that wood is is pretty nice, and it, there's a, a, a Qi charger, a wireless charger built in. It looks like a media card reader. Lots of connectivity for the the front I/O. I mean, it's it's a. I mean, it just warms up the place. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's well, nice... and I had a very good friend with a certain station wagon, so it it brings back memories. There you go. There you go. Although I don't I don't think I ever saw any station wagons with this particular color of wood. It was usually a well. Yeah, little, no, little probably darker, not. But. But. Hey, the tra family truckster was was uh, was that shade, I think. Oh, now yeah, right. but it was blondish. Nice. Well, a little sandpaper and varnish, and it'll be that light. Yeah. Uh, as is as is usual with these kind of events, this stuff will be launching at various points over the uh, the next year. Uh, you can check out Acer's uh, website. They've got a uh, on their PR page. They've got a full detailed list of everything they announced and any. Pricing, uh, there's, there's not too much pricing. Uh, I think the monitor got a price, no. um, but most well, of it of did, course, but... most of the systems, you got a bunch of choices. The yeah. 102 gigabit RAM or gigabyte RAM is model is going to be very affordable. It will not cost the same as a luxury car. If we put everything in, in reference to like um, luxury luxury automobiles, that, that'd probably be, be better. Everything It's only uh, two-tenths of a Maserati right so all right well check that out yeah and the fans got better answer. rpms yeah right <laughs> um next up we've got uh, another news update uh, this is from uh, rivet networks rivet is the maker of the killer uh, brand of networking uh if you recall we talked about back in january at ces they announced the e3000 which was an update uh to their gigabit chip it went to 2.5 gigabits uh, and that, that came out with uh, in, in a few different laptop and uh, desktop motherboard models. And now they're announcing the AX1650, which is their Intel-based, uh, so it's another collaboration with Intel, uh, Wi-Fi 6 chipset. It's a 2x2 two two, uh, radio, Wi-Fi 6. Nothing special in terms of the hardware specs because it's basically the Intel part, but it's baked in with their existing uh, killer features which, you know, uh, every time, again, just like sort of with Razer, every time we talk about this, we get people who say, oh, this is just snake oil. And and that's based on going back years to their original dedicated NICs, I think, uh, that that impression. Uh, but they've added a lot of stuff here that the the software is, and and I'll say too, the, the software in its first iterations was kind of bloatware. It was, or not bloatware, I guess, but uh, it was inefficient. It was, it was heavy on system resources and kind of clunky. They've really refined it, and it does not take up as much. Uh, I was surprised when I tested this uh, a few months ago. It does not take up as much system resources as it used to. They've really refined that, and uh, and so their existing software. There's not a lot of new features, but they've tuned the existing features for Wi-Fi six. So this is going to be things like double shot, which allows you to combine if you've got killer Ethernet and Wi-Fi, which is admittedly only available in a few units. Uh, a few models of laptops and motherboards, you can combine them into a single kind of virtual pipe that you can then route traffic. You can either get double the bandwidth uh, or route certain apps to certain certain interfaces. In the in the past, you would route your lower priority stuff to the Wi-Fi 
and you're dedicated like you're gaming and, and video streaming to the to the Ethernet. Now with Wi-Fi six, you can you can probably get much better performance than a gigabit uh, network in many situations. So it's an option for routing higher profile or higher uh, higher priority stuff through your wireless. Uh, things like the Extend, which allows you to turn your your PC with your killer Wi-Fi chip into like an access point so that you can bridge and then extend your your Wi-Fi network. That'll take advantage of using Wi-Fi 6, so your extended network will have Wi-Fi 6. Again, not a lot of new stuff, just uh, 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 approaching the Wi-Fi 6 standard from Killer's perspective here and uh, and offering offering some some good features. You can't really at this point go buy it as a uh, as a standalone product. So you're going to have to to shop for netbook or notebooks that include it. At at launch, only the Alienware will have or certain models of Alienware gaming laptops will have this uh, AX 1650 chipset. Uh, but then they they mentioned that they're they're looking to get this uh, into sort of a DIY thing where you can you can add, get the card and add it into systems. But there's mm. no details on when that would be available. Uh, so again, from a pure hardware perspective, nothing uh, unique there, but when you combine it with the software for some use cases, it's worth looking at. Uh, so something to check out there. So Alienware notebooks at first, uh, for this stuff. Have you guys used killer stuff recently? I'm using it right now. All right. There you go. It's, uh, I mean, I don't think I'm sorry. Sorry. Yeah. Big, uh, Quite a few motherboards. I remember AM3, a lot of those used uh, some of the killer networks, the lower end stuff. You still got the software stack, so they're very common, and they seem to work perfectly fine for what they do. No, my X399's got one, mm-hmm. uh, the 5200. Yeah, I've got an MSI la- uh, motherboard that has it, and uh, I tested a Alienware laptop that had it. I don't game competitively, so I can't judge the effectiveness of some of their you know game focus priority features so I, I just i don't know uh but in terms of like i think they um, have uh anti cheat built in it as well so it's not going to help you oh Sorry. okay well yeah. uh, oh, oh well but uh in terms of like some of the some of the priority stuff works better than what i have on my router for qos um it, it just it seemed to to split the the balance of uh of priorities better because my my, Q, my router um which was i tested both an asus router and a synology router um there's like a delay when you, when you're shifting traffic like if one thing if one device is hogging the bandwidth there's a delay before it kind of ramps up and from my experience using it on the device itself prioritizing applications instead of doing it on the router uh worked it worked well so uh probably not for everybody but something to consider uh there all right and uh, I believe this is our last story. Uh, we've got details. <laughs> All right, Josh, always happy to spend time with us. Um, uh-huh. So we've got some details on the next PlayStation, PS5 or PS Next or whatever they, they're going to call it. Uh, no surprise that uh, the, the consoles are going to continue to use AMD uh, parts. But uh, Sony's lead uh, system architect... Uh, Mark Cerny came out with some details, and then Lisa Su, of course, uh, AMD CEO, uh, responded uh, publicly, uh, you know, verifying, you know, this information. So, uh, so we've got some details. It's going to be based on Zen 2, 7 nanometer Zen 2 with Navi graphics, and not just from a, a performance uh, standpoint in terms of GPU and CPU, but also uh, some interesting details on storage. There's going to be a custom NVMe, or, or well, I guess they didn't say NVMe, but they said a custom SSD that is, I think they said 19 times faster. Uh, it was some absurd number, 19 times faster than the current available. Like I assume they're they're talking about SATA based SSDs. Yeah, uh, which which is interesting because we saw um, a couple months ago there was rumors about the next Xbox saying that it was going to have built in, you know, as part of the, the model was going to have NVMe storage. And people thought, well, it, that, that might, that seems a little too much. I mean, the cost on that would be too high to have capacities that are adequate at that uh, performance. But now that we've got official confirmation from Sony that they're going to be using this, um, that's, uh, that's leads, lends more, more credibility to those Xbox rumors as well. So, uh, 
I don't know. What do you guys think? You're gonna rush out and buy a buy a PS a Navi uh, Navi and Zen two based PS four? I I doubt it, but uh, it, mm. it's neat that they're looking at it from a more integrated system level because I mean we're probably gonna have high speed memory that is shared with you know CPU GPU, uh, not just you know the regular DDR four, you know DDR five. It's gonna be there. It's gonna be. You know, like like when they used, uh, you know, GDDR6 with, or did that? No, no, GDDR5 for, I think, the last generation. Why is my brain so dead all the time? But anyway, um, I.O. is going to be a tremendous area of improvement because if you're on any kind of regular uh, uh, console, you know loading times are, are significant and people have you know modified their xboxes and their ps4s to use ssd storage and getting a pretty significant boost in in these loading times and i mean the 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 programmers and that they do things to kind of minimize that as much as possible but you still got you know a, a io bottleneck there and so by going to you know faster storage or even doing some hybrid type storage things which you know, to be able to keep the cost down, uh, it would make sense if, you know, I don't think they're going to go out and use Optane and, and QLC, but, you know, it, it wouldn't surprise me if, if um, you know, they had a tiered storage with, you know, maybe just a slower spinning disk. And then you've got the fast, you know, right away storage that either has stuff that is used more recently uh, or they, you know, they, they stream a lot more stuff from, uh, you know, the hard drive to this middle storage. And, and I mean, there's so many things that they can do to make the user experience better because, you know, the days of, of you know, discs or optical media are, are you know, coming to a to an end, sadly. Bite your uh, tongue. I know. But, uh, you know, that talk know. about slow I'm in denial times. as well. You know, optical discs were horrific. Um, but yeah, it's going to be really nice to have, you know, a, a lot faster overall system because you've, you're, you've, you've taken a good look at storage and have advanced that. And plus we've got PC, PCIe 4.0. Uh, the latest chips can have, you know, 20 plus lanes that they can utilize around there that, uh, you know, that they previously didn't have. And I don't think they're going to need 20 lanes and, and uh, such a thing with the uh, CPU and GPU all integrated together in an SOC, but uh, you know storage is is that's going to be an area, and they're gonna they're gonna throw PCIe lanes at it, and there may be again, like I said, multiple levels of storage there that uh, will be really really fast, but still, you know, if you're looking at two terabytes, you know, at the at the top end of of uh, of storage space for all of these games that use. What was it? Assassin's Creed Unity, and that's a couple of years old, and that's forty-two gigs. Um, Far Cry mm. Five was seventy-eight gigs, something no like project. that. Maybe not yeah. the more. Yeah, after that big patch. Dirt Rally Two Point was huge as well. Yep, they're getting up there. PlayStation Raid Five yeah. Edition. Right. Look forward <laughs> to it. <laughs> well, you just you buy uh, additional PS Fives, and then you network them all together to create a virtual. Ah, there array. we go. Yeah, in a, in a ring, let's mm -hmm. say. Got, got to keep. The and I'd like to up. point out too, very quickly, that uh, the Atari VCS that we've been waiting for for a while, the reboot on that. Now we know that uh, AMD's new R1000 series is going to be in there as well. Oh, so great. they're they're not just the new consoles that they're actually getting the retro ones coming back too. Awesome. At all power levels, AMD's got a solution for you. Yeah. All right, so uh, we'll keep an eye on that, and uh, of course, I think uh, I don't. I think Microsoft is going to be very um, sensitive to the performance differences this generation after having that be a huge factor at the launch of the Xbox One and PS4. So, so I assume uh, we'll, we'll see similar, if not better, performance characteristics. It'll still be AMD based and probably Navi and Zen two, but uh, possibly tuned for a little bit more, so they can tout that out of the so gate. You're not going to be able to get the Intel version and the AMD version. Uh, I, I, well, uh, if Ryan would get to work and get that, gra well, Ryan and, and Raja and get that graphics card done in time, maybe, maybe Intel will have something that can compete here. But on the, at the SOC level, um, no, I doubt it. So, all right, well, let's uh, let's jump into the the picks of the week. Um, 
Actually, let me uh, load yours up here, Josh. I didn't see it at the beginning. Yeah, I'm sure you didn't. Well, oh, well you didn't have it in there. All right. Um, so I'll start first. Uh, mine, uh, obviously, a tragedy this past week uh, where there was a fire at the the uh, 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 Notre Dame Cathedral uh, in France. And uh, uh, I guess we're still figuring out what happened there, but uh, a lot of uh, community support, a surprising amount of support from the tech community, Apple pledging publicly to donate and everything like that. And uh, th this does feel kind of cheap. This kind of feels like, um, you know, in, uh, in remembrance of September 11th, save 10% on your next Tahoe kind of thing. But uh, Ubisoft, because... Assassin's Creed Unity, which Josh had just mentioned a moment ago for its its size, uh, because that game took place in France uh, and has some very detailed uh, renderings of the cathedral, uh, Ubisoft is giving the game away for free. It's a couple years old, and it was obviously plagued with performance problems, uh, particularly on the PC at launch, but uh, from what I had seen, those those got kind of uh, smoothed over, those issues. And so from, uh, from, well, from the 17th, uh, so yesterday until April 25th, so I think that's next Thursday, you can grab the uh, Assassin's Creed Unity for free from Ubisoft. You got to get it through the Uplay store, uh, but it's completely free. Uh, I downloaded it. I, I, I just logged into to Uplay and it's right there on the homepage. Click get and it's, it's yours. So uh, again, it's a little, I mean, I guess nobody died in this tragedy, so it's, it's less, um, it's less awkward. But it is a little weird. Uh, it's like, hey, free game. Uh, but at least it has some Yeah, I mean, yeah but it's, some it's connection. free. So right. that's cool. And I guess that the artist who uh, was whose job was to go and recreate Notre Dame spent almost two years doing that in the game's development. That is yep. all the person worked on is accurate measurements. He wasn't the guy who did the, the 3D laser scan, but... He did a ton of uh, research, uh, lots of art assets. Everything is pretty accurate to the the time period that uh, Notre Dame stood. And so it's uh, you know I I got um, I got the game. I'm gonna give it a shot and run around and see what uh, see what I can find. But it'll be it'll be interesting. Yeah, and I should clarify too. This is only for PC, uh, not not the consoles. So for our audience, that's great. Uh, but if you're hoping to grab this for your your console, unfortunately, uh, at this time, PC only. All right, uh, Jeremy. Jeez, I would you... actually play an Assassin's Creed game. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what, what have you got for us here, Jeremy? Ah, uh, who doesn't like affordable RAM? Uh, it's quick. Yeah, very quick. Briefly, quick on the uh, four times eight gig. Yeah, you notice a price difference there. You could spend $740 on four, or you could buy two of the eight gigs for just a hair over $200. Wait a minute. Canadian. Gaming the system. Yeah. No, it's, it's, and 3,600 is honestly a, a really good spot, uh, be you Intel or AMD, uh, because once you hit past that, you're sort of, tending to be overclocking uh, at least a little bit. And really nice timings on this. Uh, I actually picked these up uh, about a year ago uh, for my Threadripper, and they were on special for about this, and I just noticed that the special would come up again. Because, I mean, to be honest, DDR4 is still stupidly expensive. So if you're looking, this isn't a bad deal. Give it a shot. And if anyone can figure out how to disable those rgbs please let me know uh can you not turn them off in, in iq it doesn't work it, it didn't want to hmm. Hmm. and, and uh, let me clarify for our audio only listeners this is the corsair vengeance rgb pro that's a two by eight gig ddr4 kit at 3600 megahertz and yeah rgbs but well at least you can you can set them to just be white right like a nice classy simple white glow oh, yeah, honestly like when i tried to play with them they were just la 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 i can't hear you i'm going to blink and have fun ah well, so did, i just uh, sort of gave up and said fine uh, you can do that <laughs> yeah, just, just put a put a uh some tape over it but uh all right oh hey josh me you got? am i muted no i'm not nope, uh you're not muted this is the uh, the 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 Wavelink USB 3.0 to SATA. Wait, 
Yeah, 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 yeah. Sad. Um, that basically, coaster. we're getting towards the end of 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 uh, you know Sata six G stuff. So it'd be nice to be able to pick something up that you can use for multiple reasons. Uh, it's it's a cloning P device as well as a USB to Sata. Um, it's less than thirty bucks. So it's dirt cheap. I've been using one of these. Uh, it's really a, a solid, solid unit, and it's got some good functionality. Uh, it seems to be out of stock uh, from Amazon, at least at the moment. But oh, well, are... it's at Newegg. Oh, is it a Newegg? Okay. Well, we'll, yeah, well, it's also the... a Newegg, but yeah, we'll, we'll we'll get a link in the show notes to wherever it is in stock. So, okay, yeah, very nice and and uh, reliable for you. Yeah, haven't had any real issues with it. Good, because I've uh, and it looks nice and yeah, I, I haven't used this particular brand before, but I've had I've had others in this price range that usually crap out after a year or so. But uh, well, I've had yeah. a Sharkoon. Do you remember that group? <laughs> Sharkoon. Oh, Sharkoon. Yeah, yeah. I've I've still got one of their USB SATA docks and still kicking, the little eh? flip thing broke off but otherwise it it works like a champ as well so all right all right well that's the show folks uh thanks for joining us uh just to remind you we generally record wednesday nights at 10 p.m eastern uh that would be thursday morning 2 a.m utc uh if you're around the world uh but uh we were a day late this week due to travel and uh if you want to know when we go live head over to pcpro.com slash subscribe uh to join our mailing list there we use it only to alert you of when we're going to go live, or as I did last night, alert you that there will be a delay uh, due to travel or illness or whatever. Uh, so check that out. Also, uh, stay tuned. Our website redesign, which we've been promising for a while, is nearing completion. Uh, we'll be doing some testing in this uh, next week or two. And if all goes well, we will have it public before the end of the month. So uh, Stay tuned for that. I will keep you updated. And uh, as part of that redesign, we'll have pcpro.com slash live back up and running. So you can go to one place to view the live stream, get to the chat, all that good stuff there. Uh, so uh, we're excited to show that to you. And uh, as we do uh, unveil it, please, as I'm sure you will, send us your feedback and uh, we'll try to uh, iron out any kinks that we'll have along the way. But thanks for joining us, everyone. I hope you all have a great week and uh, don't forget, go to our review page for that be quiet power supply and enter the contest that uh, you have until uh, next Tuesday at midnight, April 23rd to get in to win one of three 850 watt be quiet straight power 11 power supplies. So check that out if you need a power supply for your next build and uh, we will see you next time. Thanks everyone.